So I'm going to start with a reading from this book by Bill Steinkraus, Riding and Jumping. It was written in 1961 and published by Doubleday. And I'm just going to oh, I have I'm just going to actually go to the very first chapter because I think that he says so much that's important here. It's Riders and Readers. Quote I have often wondered why riders seem to spend so little time reading about the techniques of their sport as compared to participants of other activities such as golf or skiing. Is it because of the oft-repeated remark that, quote, you can't learn to ride by reading a book? Whatever the reason, the result is unfortunate, for while I would not be so foolhardy as to deny that this statement is true, in its way, surely its way, depends heavily on what we mean by the word riding. Riding is surely one of the most versatile of all sports. It offers so many different rewards to its proponents. While the horse has lost his importance as a form of transportation for most of us, in many areas of the world he remains the most practical means of getting from one place to another, and he is still the best way to, pack, to follow a pack of hounds. Many doctors prescribe riding as therapeutic, useful activity. Riding also provides varieties of kinesthetic pleasure for people ranging from the city-bred stenographer in Central Park to the sailor on shore leave. Of course, as practiced by the great international riders, the Spanish Riding School of Vienna and the Cadre Noir, riding approaches an art. You just face the head and put one leg on each side. Well, yes, that's riding, and it's good advice, but this book is not addressed to the non-rider who would like details as to which leg on which side, or the exercise seeker, or the nature lover who communes most effectively from horseback. I do not decry these activities, nor can I deny that they too are part of riding. But the reader who may, I hope, find something of value in the comments that follow will be one who has already defined his writing objectives more explicitly. He or she, of course, will be one who is not frightened by the thought of being a serious writer and who will be challenged by the idea of acquiring the skills that will enable him to excel in the hunting field or in the show ring. Such a reader will already have been initiated into some of the basic mysteries of the relationship between man and horse and on his or her level, there is much that can be found in print that will facilitate the achievement of his goal. When does a person start to ride? In one sense, the first time he puts, quote, one leg on each side, unquote. But in the sense in which riding is meaningful to me, the rider starts to ride when he begins to contemplate the hows and whys, as well as whats of riding, and begins to concern himself with the education and improvement of his horse. The distinction between what and how almost disappears on the more sophisticated levels of riding, for the most difficult things can hardly be done at all except in a certain way. I never seem to be able to do as much riding as I would have liked. Quite possibly there was much more encouragement from my parents that I realized at the time, but I am grateful to them for not having permitted me to become too early satiated with riding or to regard or to regard riding as more of an obligation than a treat. So many children of fine horsemen who get some encouragement from their parents to follow their footsteps, lose their enthusiasm for riding very early because the riding is so available and so easily becomes a matter of, if you don't exercise your pony today, you can't watch TV before dinner. And you know, I think that this is a really important point because so many of us are starting riding later in life and we had such a strong desire to ride as children but weren't able to do it. And now that you do get to ride, your passion overcomes so many obstacles that's because you were, you know, not able to ride the way you were as a child. So I think there's something to be said for having that passion all your life and now finally being able to, um, to get on a horse.